not as sweet as I would have expected it. Hello and welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. Last time we had the Koval Rye and this time we have the Koval Bourbon. If you'd like to know more about the Koval distillery, then please fill up, follow this link and you'll find uh, quite some information on whiskey.com plus a video about the distillery. The Bourbon. Yes, it's a Bourbon, so no coloring. It's also not chill filtered. It doesn't carry an age statement. But no, I think if you have a bourbon, then you don't have to have that much aging going on. Um, but it has, I think, more than three years, maybe five years, I don't know. Um, it has a bit more kick to it. It has 47% ABV. I expect to uh, have a bit more delivered on, yeah, on intensity with this. 47% ABV. It's, it's not common. 47% ABV for all the Americans out there is 94 proof. So just above, uh, just above 100. And the whiskey is has been stored in uh, fresh casks from Minnesota with 30 gallons plus minus one, which is about 113 liters. Um, the mash bill is a secret. Uh, you can, as much you can say, is that it's uh, distilled from 100% grains. That's not much more than information than bourbon, because if you do bourbon, then you have to s follow certain regulations, and that means you have more than 50% corn in there. But what they also say is they don't use any rye or wheat. Usually use rye for a bit more spiciness, a bit more punch to it. Wheat you use if you want to have a bit more softer and, yeah, wheaty, <laughs> like like a bun. Uh, but they don't do that. They use millet. And that's a, yeah, that's a, a grain that we don't use here in Europe or USA or America that much, but they use it in Africa and I think Asia as well. So something new for us. Yeah, unfortunately, no age statement, but uh, we're gonna have a try. Um, bourbon. I thought they did uh, normal barreling, but here it has a, a barreling number on a barrel number on the back. It's barrel number 1051, and this one is 1,151. 1, this is 1,170. So they do single barrels then. Um, yeah, what to expect from from a Koval bourbon? I don't know. I would. I'm still expecting a normal bourbon. Maybe a bit, a bit more intense on the, on the vanilla and caramel. Even even more intense because of the, the small and heavily charred oak casks. Mm -hmm. It's not as sweet as I would have expected it. It has a certain, certain sweetness as well. You do get a vanilla note. It's not probably any cold. Yeah, it's warm. From the smell, I have to say it's not that intense. But you get do get the the finer notes. Bit of a, a tropical style going on here. Some, what's that called? Papaya, mango. Not not the sour like like uh, lemons or pineapple, but the the sweet and smooth and easy ones like papaya and mango. Make a bit of a bit of a banana note in there as well. missing in, in intensity and smell it definitely has it in the flavor mm. sweet with uh, fresh fruits also a bit of a tropical thing going on there but also I would say 
bit of peaches, a bit of the Mediterranean fruit thing going on, a bit of a lemon thing going on as well, apricot. And now you got mm, a very, a bit of a dry, sticky, sweet feeling going on there. Mm. Ooh, the finish, not that intense, but with a bit of a peppery spiciness, just slightly, maybe a bit of a oak note. Mm. 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 All with the second gulp, you get much more spiciness, a little barbecue smoke. It's strange, it's, it's not like the first one. Very different. The first one was fresh, fruity. Now it's more of a oaky, peppery, smoky, lightly smoky. Like, not like peat smoke, but a bit of a barbecue tobacco kind of smoke. Mm. Mm. Very strange that it just develops in the in the second second sip. Mm. It's definitely worth a try. If you find the, the miniature, the miniature always great to, to expand your your whiskey horizon. Yeah, so uh, thanks for watching. If you find this interesting then please feel free to share.